He sort of extended himself a little bit. He went over what he was capable of doing. Colin Kelsey was very difficult because he could do a lot of different things. Good tune and backhand. Mentally, I think he felt a little intimidated by me. Yevgeny's talents led him to two major championships. The first at the French Open in 1996, where he dashed Sampras's hopes in the semifinals. And later, an Australian Open victory in 1999, beating Thomas Ankvist in the final. He was a big star in Russia, and uh, he was the first one who won the Grand Slam for the men. He was a tremendous player, but nobody remembers. I think it's too bad that people tend to sort of dismiss him, because he's worthy of much more than that. Just heard the news about the Olympics. Evgeny Kafelnikov, also an Olympic gold medalist. Paul, you coached Pete Sampras many times against Kafelnikov. What made him so good? I think Pete said it in, in that little clip that he can do a lot of different things very well. Um, terrific two-handed backhand. Was one of the first guys in, in that era of kind of 90s um, where he was really good doing a number of different things. And, and I think that reflects itself in winning the Australian Open and Roland Garros. Um, I think he is able to stay at the back of the court, hurt you from back there, but also can come forward and volley. I mean, he was also a great doubles player. Right? He played tremendous doubles. Um, one of the interesting things about Yevgeny Kvonk is he's only about a 40% winner versus other top 10 players, uh, which means he was a little bit vulnerable. And I felt like some of that was because he played so much that he played under a little bit more mental fatigue, played singles and doubles all the time, played a ton of tournaments. So because of that, he was opening himself up to a few more losses. Perhaps that's why he didn't have as good a record against the top players. But look, 26 titles, former, former number one in the world, uh, two-time major winner. This guy was a good player. Paul, well, I actually think Kafelnikov is one of the more underrated guys when we talk about you know, who's the best, who's had the best career, and as you mentioned, all of his stats, but something I don't think we'll ever see again, really, because not many guys play singles and doubles these days, is the 96 French winning singles and doubles over a grueling two-week period. I mean, it's, it's, it's such an incredible effort. Again, world number one, gold medalist, um, just a storied career and uh, just, you know, not enough credit, I think, for the Russian. Yeah, I agree with you, Prakash. To see a top player commit to doubles, and especially during majors, where three out of five sets in the singles you play every other day, he won four majors in doubles, so he was always playing. And as Paul said, his results, though, got watered down. He always played tournaments, played almost every single week. I So I think some of that gets lost when you look at how good was he. If you take his best results, he was great. If you compare it as a whole... Then it goes down a little bit. Um, but I think that he inspired also this generation of Russian women that started to come through about four or five years later. All of a sudden they see Evgeny. Some of them grew up with him. Some of them grew up watching him on TV win majors. It just started a culture in Russia of great success over the next decade or so. Yeah, you can see that even today. Medvedev, Hatchinov, Rublev, a thousand wins in singles and doubles for Yevgeny Kafelnikov, and he was just put into the International Tennis Hall of Fame, class of 2019.